everyone. I'm Rachel Siegeloff. I'm the Director of Philanthropy at the National Diaper Bank Network. And I'm very excited to be here with Shannon Hexamer, who is a founder of the Stark County Diaper Bank in Canton, Ohio. And I just want to thank you so much for joining us, Shannon. And we would love to hear a little bit more about how Stark County Diaper Bank came to be. Thank you, Rachel. Um, thank you, National Diaper Bank Network, for uh, a lot of support you've given me since I started handing out diapers. So um, just a background, um, I am in advertising and marketing, and one of my clients is Once Upon a Child. Um, they have a location in Canton, Ohio, and the owner of that asked me if there was a diaper bank in town. And um, I started looking around and connecting with some folks who are in the nonprofit area and um, some foundations and came to realize that while there were a few diaper banks giving out diapers, there wasn't anybody doing it as a mission in terms of ongoing service to, to community, um, to families in our community. <clears throat> so I connected with Thrive, which is an uh, infant mortality um, organization and um, the folks there um, helped spearhead a survey to their um, to their co uh, collaborators. And we found that there was a great need for diaper um, awareness and, and to, you know, people needed support. I think when Barb Weaver of Once Upon a Child asked me the question, was a diaper bank in town? I had no idea that WIC and SNAP and government assistance did not help families with diaper need and, and to help get them, you know, allow them to use their funding. When that came apparent to me and then putting the numbers to how much diapers cost, I knew then that we had a problem in our community um, because people really did need diapers. Um, so the poverty level is really high in our community. Um, and one out of four families with children five or under are in the poverty level. Uh, so we have a high poverty rate. So the need was great once we started inquiring about that. Um, then a group of us who were surveyed started getting together. And um, I, I, we kept trying to find out information about how we could work with an existing organization to maybe start a diaper bank internally. And came to find that nobody was really interested in that. And so we... Um, we decided that because that wasn't happening, um, we thought maybe there was another avenue to approach we could take. Um, so I contacted uh, the other Ohio diaper banks. Um, so uh, Sweet Cheeks, Megan Fisher, who's like the epitome of diaper banks, and um, also uh, Jana at MKC in Youngstown. And visited Jana, um, spoke to Megan, and um, reached out to the National Diaper Bank um, and um, network and decided, you know, we think we could do something. So I attended the conference in 18, October of 18, um, in Atlanta and told my husband, we're gonna start a diaper bank. So um, with that, um, we uh, came back, I got a board together of uh, many of those individuals that were helping us and, um, pulled them together, applied for our 501c3, um, kind of set a plan that we would start um, um, diaper drives and start collecting diapers in January of 19, with the goal of having a three month supply of diapers, choosing partners, um, and then start giving out diapers in June. Um, and by the grace of God, literally, it happened. Um, so we had our first diaper drive in January. We got our recognition of our 501c3 in February. And in June, we handed, uh, well, February, we also picked our partners. Um, so we distribute our diapers through partners. Um, we don't distribute those ourselves. Um, and our partners were the Salvation Army of Canton Alliance and Maslin, North Canton Church of Christ and Catholic Charities. And um, we started working with them. And you guys are amazing. Like the diaper app that we have um, through you was incredible because it was actually getting started when we were getting started. So we kind of married together our, our growth. 
and um, we've taught them how to, to use that. And uh, they placed their first order in May. We delivered in June, and we uh, we've been in the diaper business ever since. So. So you've really grown right over the past you know year or so. Yeah, it's been it's been a steady growth. To date, we have um, we have um, gathered uh, through donations or grants funding to buy diapers, 173,000 diapers, and then we've given out 144,000 diapers since last June. Um, our partners um, had been getting uh, about 8,000 diapers a month. So they would go to the diaper app, they'd request their diapers, I'd pack the diapers here in my home and then deliver them uh, each month to them. So they had to have their uh, request in by mid-month and then we'd deliver them at the, um, the last week of the month. So I'd take them out and to the partners. Um, so it was about 8,000 diapers a month that we were, but we've recently been given out about 12,000. Um, a month. So I know it's small compared to some, but if we're really trying to cover Stark County as much as possible uh, in terms of families so they don't have transportation um, stress trying to get some diapers for their family. Our CEO likes to say small things have a big impact. So even at you know, 8,000 diapers, you were still that's 8,000 more clean diapers accessible to those babies than there were. Right you know, a month or two ago. So right. every diaper matters. Um, what has been, if you can talk about sort of what COVID has uh, looked like and how it has impacted you and either changed, adjusted the service model or um, did you see a significant in increase in requests through the app? When we, when we started the uh, Diaper Bank, uh, the Goodwill Campus, uh, the Stark County Hunger Task Force at the Goodwill Campus, allowed us to have space to wrap once a month. So we had to cut that off. Um, so then I was delivering diapers to volunteers' doorsteps and with, with packages of di you know, wrap and tags, and they would wrap them for me. I'd pick them up, I'd bring them back to my house and then prepare them for um, distribution. So that, that changed in that our volunteers really couldn't gather together to do wraps um, instead, or repackaging. Instead, I would deliver them to their homes. I got smart though. I eventually had Walmart just deliver the diapers to their houses, <laughs> and then I would just pick them up and bring them here. It took, I'm like, why did it take me so long to figure that out? Um, and some of them still prefer that, and I do that, because they wanna be involved, but they don't wanna be out uh, amongst you know other people. So. We, we totally appreciate that. Um, at the beginning, the very first month was rampant. It, the, the increased need, like in April, our numbers went extremely high, people needing diapers. And then it went down a little, but now this past month, we've seen another increase uh, again. And so at that point, we decided on, to take on emergency distribution partners. They weren't our official partners, but they, we, we knew that there was a problem for transportation and we wanted to get in other communities in our county that could get the, um, the diapers more accessible. Um, so at that point, um, the Lake Township Fish, um, which is a food bank, they began participating. Bridgepoint, which served another area in our community, they started participating. The Urban League, they started participating. And then we also gave diapers to uh, the YWCA Early Childhood um, Head Start program, because those parents were used to getting diapers in, in Head Start uh, supplied to them. So they bundled up package of our diapers to, to release to them so they could have them at home. So we just began those partnerships because we found it was necessary to help people in more territories than we were currently covering. Um, we ended up taking two of them as um, partners now, and um, one of them is still getting diapers from us, but they don't actually have a location. So they go out, that's the Urban League, so they go out to schools once in a while and set up and try to help families. So we're supporting them as well. So that's where we saw the difference with the company. 
do you where do you find that you are locating diapers or are you purchasing diapers diaper drives are really difficult to happen at this point um how do you find that you are trying that you're able to meet that increased need in terms of diaper purchasing or a diaper how do you find that well you know because you're your expertise i've been writing a lot of grants we're very blessed here in stark county that we have a stark county community foundation and what they do is they understand when the the, the need rose with with um, a lot of agencies that they stepped up and made grants available so we had funding there that helped us get through that um, I, I, I do write as many grants as I see available. Um, and so I've been grant writing and we've been purchasing the diapers. Um, then we recently, um, because of National Diaper Bank, National Diaper Need Awareness, we have um, just last week had a diaper drive at Once Upon a Child, who um, is a huge partner for us, um, and also at a grocery store. So we've been getting diapers now just this last two, three weeks in from drives. So that's been beneficial. We also have a drop box uh, that people can always put diapers in at uh, Once Upon a Child and at Akron Children's Hospital. Um, so our boxes are there all the time and uh, we stop by and pick those up, but that's been a big help to us as well. How are you thinking about National Diaper Need Awareness Week? Um, I sent a note to the governor and I heard, even though it said they're not giving out um, uh, proclamations. proclamations, yeah, that I heard maybe that he is. So um, I work closely with um, Senator Kirk Schering from our district and a representative Olslager um, actually have known them for quite some time and I sat down and met with them previously. So I keep them really informed. Uh, the diaper drives, I sent out a press release. Um, you know, I, I try to ongoing talk about that. We're also thinking about a couple more drives for that week. I reached out to a couple folks and now that the drives are allowable. So that's, that's some of the things that we're working on. Yep. And of course, thank you to my volunteers, the volunteers, if, if somebody wasn't wrapping diapers, we couldn't get these all done. So uh, they're, they're essential, they're essential to the process. Um, I would say to diaper banks, look to um, high school students that are looking for community service for National Honor Society and things like that. They have been amazing for us. So that, that would be some recommendation that I would have too. Um, just to sort of bring things around, um, our conference is happening virtually um, at the end of October. And what I love is that, you know, you mentioned coming to the conference and talking to other people. So we're hoping, you know, that you and everyone will join us at the conference October 21st to 23rd. Um, we're excited, new platform. We're going to be presenting our conference um, and we hope it's as meaningful and as people always find it to be an educational and supportive, and we're looking forward to seeing everybody there. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I have to admit, I'm gonna miss that one-on-one -on -one contact um, because I, I do, I learned so much and I've met so many awesome um, people that care compassionately about their, their community and um, about this amazing room to be in i have to position. say yeah it being is. in that room it it's makes me just feel good about the world <laughs> yep, it does. Um, and there's so many amazing people that are really just doing it just you can tell they're pouring their heart and soul into it and so it's personal and it's um so we're very um lucky to be a part of this community um well thank you so much anna for your time i so appreciate it You're um, you're welcome. Uh, the other thing that you and I talked about is being able to show our family members, our grandkids, for me, my grandkids, you, your kids, um, what paying it forward means. So good stuff. Absolutely. That's one of the great things about, you know, running it close to home is that our kids right. are seeing exactly how we are handing something and giving to our community because that's what we do. We give back to our community. Um, so that's amazing. And thank you for all you're doing in Stark County. Thank you. That's amazing. Thank you for your support. I appreciate it greatly. 
such a partnership and we're super appreciative and we um, wish you a great National Diaper Need Awareness Week. Thank you. Thanks, Shannon. Bye-bye.